Well, good morning, everybody. Um, this is Dave Rolf, as most of you know, and for those that don't, nice to meet you. Um, I am replacing Ben Woodward today. He asked me to take over this call because he had another um, something else to do and uh, was unable to make the call and wanted to keep the tradition going of having a call. So first of all, I thank you very much for that invitation. And uh, we have a half hour together and um, I have some interesting stuff that I wanna talk about today that uh, I think you'll enjoy and find useful. And of course, um, that's pretty much been my game for a long time now is focusing my attention on helping other people in uh, what they're doing and uh, having the success that I had. And I had an unbelievable success with this business and this relationship with Nikon that I started about 30, almost 31 years ago now. And, um, and it's just been a, a wild ride, a wonderful journey and a whole bunch of fun. And I then turned my, my self around, so to speak in 2000 and started focusing on others um, and providing whatever knowledge and wisdom I had to help you become successful. I have my own webpage, DaveRolf.com. Uh, I've written a couple of books about this subject, and um, I'm on a new chapter of uh, adding information on DaveRolf.com so that you can uh, get access to it. Just go on there and, and find out about it. And currently, this is very interesting because this is what I want to talk about today. I was just on the John Lively call and uh, about storytelling, and. Uh, you know, this was a subject that, you know, has been in my arena for a long time. And one of the things I realized after watching the, the event this past weekend was, you know, part, I haven't told all of my story in, in the sense of when I was involved with Nikon, I haven't told, you know, some of the earlier beginnings of where I learned to do very interesting things. And, and so one of the interesting things was this this uh, idea of the story. And uh, first of all, I'm gonna read a quick definition of story because I think this is important for people to understand what this is to, to reframe it in the right, the right sense. Because I was listening to John and all of his stuff and in my book, Vested Interest, this was chapter six, you know, what's your story, what's going on in society. And back in 1975, when I started in the insurance business, you started with the story. So this is a concept that's been in the industry for ever and a day, and it's very important. But a story is an account of incidents or events. This is from Webster's uh, or collegiate definition. It's a statement regarding the facts pertinent to a situation in question. Uh, it's an antidote, um, and it's also a fictional narrative shorter than a novel. You know, you could have that kind of a story. Um, now, this is interesting. It's a lie or a falsehood. Uh, you know, you, you've heard this in, 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 you know, whatever, a legend, a romance, a matter or situation. So from the standpoint of getting the right definition about the story, um, I've been, you know, on DaveRolf.com right now, there are two new issues of uh, helping to build your business. One is the organizer, which is the the bullet points of what you have to have in order to build any kind of business. And then uh, the second version, the second uh, lesson or workshop was what do you have to do or what do you have to do? And, and the concept was based on the idea of, you know, the whole secret to our business is learning how to do the activities that are known to create results based on who you are and your style. And, um, so from that viewpoint, um, it, it then uh, opens up a number of doors for, or for how we proceed. Now, with Nikon, what was interesting, when I started in 1990, Nikon provided the story. And Nikon set the stage, and, and, and this was, you know, we all followed. And again, it was like when I started in insurance in 1975. The company I worked for provided the story. And then what I, my job was to tell that story. But there was one step that very rarely gets talked about 
And that is the step of finding out what other people need and want first. <laughs> and and th this was an interesting concept. In other words, we know what the process of our business is. We, it, it works when we talk to other people. It works when we provide them with the, the solution to their situation, problem, or challenge. It, it works when we have co collaboration amongst each other with what to do and how to do things. It works when we have fun. It works when we get rid of, you know, they've they're said it's, there's two reasons why people buy things, for happiness or to eliminate pain. So from the standpoint of, of, of what we do, and here's the bottom line, we are all good salespeople. Now, how do we define a salesperson? Well, we, we, define, we define sales as effective communicators. Really, that's what it boils down to because the whole deal revolves around communication. And communication is perception and communication is being aware of what's going on or communication is engaged with somebody else. Now, for example, I'll give you a story, quick one. So I'm on a plane. I'm going from, I think, San Jose down to Los Angeles. It was a short, you know, 45 minute plane. I'm in the bulkhead. I think it was on um, Southwest and, uh, or one of those lines. I was on the bulkhead seat, middle seat was the last seat that was available for me to get. And the lady coming up the aisle carrying a roller bag and, um, <clears throat> you know, she can't lift, the, she can't lift a roller bag up into the bin. So she turns to the guy behind her and says, you know, excuse me, would you help me? I can't lift my arm above my shoulder. Okay, so I'm observing this. Okay, I want you to get this message here. I'm observing what's going on. So she says to this guy, she can't do something. Well, to me, that means problem. To me, that means from experience, something's going on there that needs fixing. Now, do I jump up and stand up in the middle of the aisle and say, hey, I'm an econ distributor. I got magnets. I can help you, right? <laughs> or do I get, do I become a little bit more professional and, and see what happens? Well, she sits right beside me. Lo and behold, she sits right beside me in the aisle seat. And okay, we get ready. We have to buckle up. The stewardesses do their thing and they tell us about safety and, and so on and so forth. And the plane takes off. So we start talking. Well, where are you going? Where are you going? Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? What are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Well, 30 minutes into the flight, it was an hour flight. I said, by the way, I couldn't help over here that you had a problem lifting up your bag. Was there, is there something going on with your arm? And boom, boom, she tells me everything that's going on. Now, in a sense, I found out what was needed and wanted. <laughs> he, in, in, I wrote this book called Bested Interest, and then I rewrote the book called The Smart Networker, which is a digital version, which is on DaveRolf.com. And in chapter four, lesson four, there's a little bit of data here that I knew that worked. And that's when, when you have an issue or a problem that you're trying to resolve, but haven't found a solution for, it sits there floating around constantly. It bothers you, it festers you, it nags you, and it's constantly reminded as to what's going on by what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're walking, you go, you, you know, let's say the problem is you can't sleep and, and you're going into a restaurant to have dinner and, and you see somebody loached over trying to fall asleep and it reminds you that you can't sleep. See, problems have this way of nagging us constantly. So when there's a problem, what I knew, if I taught solution about anything, I could restimulate problems. And by restimulate, I mean, I could bring them to the surface so that I knew that when people had a problem and they couldn't resolve and a solution came along, they grabbed at it. They grab at it instantaneously. It's, it's, kind of, it, it's really kind of funny. I had a, a, an interesting situation. Macy's was having a sale. And I was on a piece of luggage for business carrying her. And, and I'm on the internet and I see this piece of luggage and I said, God, that's a good price from 360 to 148. I should get that because my bag's kind of old and I'm, I'm not traveling right now, but I could travel in the future. And so I think about it and I say, nah, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Next day I look on the internet and I said, man, you know, I should probably do that. I click on it and 
it's back up to the regular price. It's 360 bucks. And I said, ah, shucks, I missed that. Um, and, um, and so I, you know, forgot about it. Next day, the sale's back on. Oh, I'm going to buy it. I bought it just like that instantaneously. See, what we have to understand in the sense of what we do, we communicate ideas, solutions, and we identify problems. And our job is to deliver happiness and, and comfort and eliminate pain in some way, shape, or form. Now, I'm on the plane with this gal. We start talking 20 minutes into the, or 30 minutes into the road. By the end of the flight, she bought a sleep system. She had mag boys, she had mag steps, a car seat. About three or $4,000 worth of product was sold to her on that plane trip. And when we got home, I called her back and forth. We set, set up an appointment and, and did the order, et cetera, et cetera. Why did that happen? Well, it, it happened because I observed something that was going on and then I found out what the problem was, which was what's needed and or wanted. And then I presented her with a solution that, and then I validated that solution with other stories. See, you gotta have many stories in this business. It's not just your story. It's, it's the story of Nikan. It's the story of Isamu Masuda. It's why did Nikan start in the first place? You should all know that story. It's a very important story because that's the key to our beginning. You got the story of what's going on in society with COVID. What's the story with people losing their job? 15% of our population got totally financially screwed by COVID. And that's an important story to understand because we have a solution for that. But here's the thing. What people make the mistake on is they start telling their story before they know if the person's interested to hear it. They don't find out what's needed and or wanted first. They don't get into good communication. See, communication, okay, so let, let's set the stage for something else. 12.30 Pacific time, 3.30 Eastern time this Saturday, I'm gonna do on DaveRolf.com on Zoom, the workshop on telling your story. And uh, I think you'll find it brilliant and it will help you immensely. Not saying what John's doing is not Part of par for the course, what he's doing is wonderful. Uh, it's been well known forever. If you were in the sales industry, because we were all taught this. I was taught this with Mutual of Omaha. I was taught this with Yellow Pages. I was taught this with Ford Motor Company. These are all companies that I worked for and learned how to sell. And basically selling is simply communicating. That's all it is. It's effective communication. It's asking questions. It's listening to what they're saying. So, so the person, um, okay, so Saturday, it's at 12.30 Pacific Standard Time and 3.30 Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Time, whatever, um, on DaveRolf.com. So if you go to DaveRolf.com, there's an automatic link to the Smart Network or Zoom page. It's a piece of cake easy, and you'll see the other two videos. You might want to put them under your belt before you get started. It'll it'd be very helpful. But anyway, um, so... In the sense of this, using this lady as an example on the plane, so I observed perception. Well, that is communication, right? Because I'm looking out and perceiving her. I'm hearing what she's saying. I'm taking in that information, and I'm kind of sitting there thinking to myself, "Oh, well, this is good." <laughs> it's kind of like you're you're fishing, and you throw out the bait, and you get a little. You get a little tug on the line, you know, and it's like, wow, this is good. This is this is why I came fishing. I wanted that tug on the line. And and so that's what I saw. So now I could have done two things. I could have like bang, hit her on the head as soon as she sat down and got into it. Or I could have established a little rapport, uh, you know, friendly back and forth banter. How are you? Where are you from? Is this are you going home? Are you from work? What do you do? That kind of thing. Which, which creates that degree of liking or that affinity for somebody else. I mean, it, it's like friendship, you know, it's creating a, a friendship and, and uh, so on and so forth. Now, from the standpoint of, um, well, again, Barbara, maybe, maybe trust is fine. Maybe they don't know you from Adam. She didn't know who I was, but simply you get into communication. See, everything, on planet earth revolves around communicating. And it's a two terminal universe that we live in. So in other words, 
you can't communicate with yourself. You have to have somebody else to communicate with. So once you start communicating, we all know that that works. And if you go to a party, if you go to an event, if you go to somewhere else and you run into somebody that has a like-minded viewpoint, you've got Republicans and you've got Democrats, you've got people that like Trump and people that hate Trump, you've got people that you know like this and like that. Why? Because that's who they are. That's their circumstance. That's their consideration. So in, in the sense of doing that, then we take the next step. What's the next step? Well, we have to know what's needed and or wanted. Now, from the standpoint of, okay, you're going to go buy a new car. Who are you going to buy the car from? Are you going to buy it from the person that talks the most, that advertised the most, that supports the idea the most, has the best features, has the best benefits? You're going to base your decision on how you feel about it. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so from the standpoint of who you buy the car from is dependent on what's important to you. So yes, you will get into a trust position down the line, but more importantly, more importantly, you're going to do it because it's something you need and you want because it's going to provide you with happiness or eliminate pain or discomfort, period in a nutshell. It doesn't matter who you buy it from as long as it solves and resolves your issue. So what's important to understand, once you're in the business, it's no longer about you. It's not about you or your position or anything that happened to you because that could mean diddly to somebody else. So for example, when I got into the business, I was called by a gentleman that I'd done business with in another network marketing company and he phoned me up and he said, Dave, there's this new Japanese company in town. They're selling magnets. I think you should get involved. Well, the first thing I thought about was refrigerator magnets. I didn't have anything wrong with me health-wise. When I found out that they were health-related, I said, not for me. I need to make money. So I told him to go take a flying leap. He chased me for months. And then finally, no one else was calling. That Christmas was bad. Their circumstances were rotten. And I thought, well, I've got some experience. I saw people that had done this. The guys that are up above us are making a ton of money. Maybe, maybe I could do this. I, was, I had no success in the past. So I was looking at negative, 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 negative. But we finally got to the point where he figured out what I needed and wanted. And what I needed and wanted at that time was help to join help for product and help for promotional materials because I had no money, none, zip, diddly. I didn't have any credit available, nothing. So, but he didn't address that issue. So he kept trying to pitch me on the product, pitch me on the product, pitch me on the product, pitch me on the product. I felt great. <laughs> I didn't have anything wrong except for I was in pain financially. So when he solved that riddle, bang, done. Rest is history. He gave me the 49 bucks to sign up. I borrowed the money from my mother-in-law to buy the product. And he provided the promotional materials because we didn't have any promotional materials at that time to get started. The rest is history. So my neighbor, you're gonna hear more of this on Saturday. Um, similar situation. Um, so, here, here's the here's the key thing. You got a story about Masuda. You got a story about Nikon. You got a story about yourself. You got a story about products. What is the story? It's effective communication about what you're trying to do. And and so from the standpoint of getting started and developing this, I remember my upline Jeff Van Blarkham used to say, "Yeah, man, uh, I'd go down to the basement. I'd take my daughter's dolls and I'd put them on the couch and I'd make my presentation to them." In chapter 10 of Vested Interest, the book I wrote in 1990, the, the chapter 10 was practice, 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 practice. Um, when I started in insurance, I sold, light, I sold disability insurance to farmers in the, in the field. And I had to drive out from my city out into the country for a week and knock on farm doors and present them with Mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom uh, insurance. Uh, 
So I, I saw things, I, I learned things, I was trained to do things, I was trained to give presentations, I was trained to be observant and look at what's going on and listen to what they're saying because every buyer is going to tell you what they need and want if you ask the right questions, if you steer them in the right direction. And there's timing, everything's involved with timing. It was like the lady on the plane, it was like, you're, you're going to see on Saturday, I've, I've developed all these stories to, to put in to make this make more sense for you. So in, in doing, yes, you have to develop a story. Yes, you need to practice with your groups. Yes, you have to be on track with what it is. But remember, to the person that you're talking about, it's about them, not you. So your story might not match what's going on with them. Your back problem might not mean any sense to them. Your headaches might not make any sense to them. Your financial problem. One of the things I realized we, when we first got started, the major product of Nikon at that time was magnets and a sleep system. And we had this big, thick Kinko mattress pad um, that, and we had a display on, on, in Westwood in the office in the uh, presentation room. And uh, there was an article in either, it was either Life or Time that said 50% of the population can't sleep. So, so I said, as a sales guy, I said, wow, this is great. I got a 50% chance of being successful here. This is wonderful, good start. So then I started calling everybody up and saying, hey, I got this great product. You'll get the best night's sleep you possibly can. I've got a demo, I'd like to share it with you. And uh, away we go. And then I get people phoning me back and said, man, that thing's impossible to sleep on. I had the worst night's sleep I ever had. Now, we then later figured out that it takes time for some people to adjust to a new system. And you can't immediately thrust on them and say, this is the greatest thing since sliced toast until they have the experience that it's the greatest thing since sliced toast. You know what I'm saying? So, so then we, I changed that story around in the sense of, you know, we have this technological wonder in sleep. You know, what, what we're seeing is that people that are getting used to it and, and get, you know, because it's a change over a period of time are going to start getting the best night's sleep they can and away we go. So once I started using that story, I then got everybody in because it was based on their experience and their situation and not mine. See, my experience and my situation was based on who I am, my circumstance, and my condition. You can never do what I did because you're not me. But you can do what you do if you understand what needs to be done. So what needs to be done here is, is a fascinating story. <laughs> and, and you can create a fascinating story. But really what, you know, what we do is we are effective communicators and our job is to find out what's needed and or wanted and then deliver that, plain and simple. So how do we do that? Well, we, we, we do that by asking questions. Now, I used to do these live seminars. I travel around the country and, and uh, promote the, the vested interest seminars. And, and I had a game and the game that it was, uh, we met on Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. So on, on Saturday night after the seminar, the last part of the seminar, we introduced or I introduced this game called the what do you do game. You can find this on DaveRolf.com. And the what do you do game was really simple. It was a game that I created, which asked questions in the sense of a survey. And the questions are is I'm involved in a training seminar and we're having a contest to see who can find the most different number of occupations. Would you help me? And then you send, you have a piece of paper, it has that question. I sent people out to, to play this game. And, and, and part of the responsibility of playing the game was they had to then say to the person that was willing to participate with them, in order for me to, to validate that I've done this right, I need your name, your phone number, and your signature on this piece of paper. Now, the class 
would look at that and say, oh, God, I can't do that. That's an impossible task. Oh, my God. Get, go talk to strangers and then get them to sign something and give me their name and their phone number. Oh, my goodness. How am I going to do that? Well, see, I knew something they didn't know. One thing, I'd done it, so I knew what would happen. So I had experience on my hand. And I was confident that anybody could go out there and create what they wanted to create. Well, I, I go back to the first time I did this, and, and there was one guy in my class, and um, he got creative with that idea and went to a gas station. And he brought back a list of 50 names with 50 signatures and 50 phone numbers and had people asking him what he was doing that he was so excited about and could they participate with him. As a result, and then here's the question, as, here's the thing, as a result of him getting out there and asking questions. You see, most of us love to communicate in some way, shape or form. And, and again, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of like, you know, for you gals, you, you need a dress for a prom or you need a dress for a wedding or whatever. And you walk into the store and, and the person says, can I help you? And you say, no, I'm just looking. Oh, come on. You're not just looking. You're there to buy. <laughs> so you, you get into the conversation and then finally say, yeah, I'm going to a wedding. I need this. And, um, and uh, okay, talk to you later, Ruth. That's great. Um, hopefully I'll see you on Saturday or you can watch it later. Anyway, um, so that no matter what it is, no matter how you're dealing with it, when, when you and somebody else start conversing back and forth, it's like playing tennis. It's a volley back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that's communicating. But if you're just talking and, and spilling out your pitch and nobody's responding or doing anything, then you're not communicating. You're just talking. And so what we do as network marketers and what we do here in Nikon is we communicate. And what are we communicating? Well, we're communicating solutions. Now, they could be economical solutions. They could be health solutions. They could be I need something to do solutions. They could be whatever. That, that, that doesn't matter. I, I had a huge organization in 27 countries all over the world and people had all kinds of different reasons why they were doing Nikon. I did it for my reason. They did it for their reason. You're gonna do it for your reason. And the people that are coming in are gonna do it for their reason. The opportunity we have is to expose them to an idea that they might not be aware of. Because Nikon doesn't do any advertising. There's nothing on the internet about, you know, what, what we really do and what we're really about. Uh, that's our job. That's what we get paid for and that's what we, uh, what we do. So to improve your, uh, you know, your position and your ability, take a look at this information, plug in on Saturday, check out DaveRolf.com. And if you have any questions that you need to have answered about Nikon or doing the business or whatever, you can give me a call. And my number is 617, if you want to write it down, 617-388-9109. And this has been my life work. This is what I, uh, you know, I kind of, you know, people jazz on me because I say I retired when I was 49 and I'm now 70. And uh, <laughs> so it's it's like, I just changed the, the way I worked the business, but I've always been involved and now it's almost 31 years and uh, it's been, a, it's just been a great ride. So if you want a piece of that, or if you want to know something, there isn't very much, I don't know about this business or how to play it or what to do. I just need to know your circumstance. So, because I, I tailor things to who you are, not the broad stroke, but in the sense of how we, that we're all about communication is the broad stroke because that's all we do is we communicate with other people. We provide them with information that's important to them. And our job is to find out what is important to you. So with that note, we'll end it there. I will stop the recording and then see if there's any questions or we'll keep it going. Are there any questions? Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome.
Well, I'll add a comment. Uh, Dave has been meeting with my team. He's working with one person individually, and it's been very good for the team and for the individual and for myself. Thank you, Dave. You know, here I got I got to say this is kind of interesting. I got a thank you note from her and uh, her name is Sue. And it's just uh, I just want to say thank you for your coaching. I feel confident that we will make a lot of money under your direction. <laughs> I, I like the money part. I you know, that was the fun yeah, part. And, yeah. and by the way, money, just so you know, is not I'm not a money hog or a freak, but money represents creativity. It's the scorecard. So the more creative you are in doing what you do, you pull in more of that green piece of paper. So money is simply the exchange medium that we utilize to get everything else that we need. You can't live without it and uh, it becomes important. And if you play the game right, it's a heck of a lot of fun. So anyway, there you go. We'll end off now. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. and. Uh, and if you see Ben, thank him for allowing me to take over um, whatever. Okay, a potential consultant is afraid to lose friends and family. What is your solution? Well, again, I it's the third party thing. So in that particular case, like, uh, you know, it, okay, let, let's look at it this way. If you're a professional attorney, what do you do when you get your license to practice law? You hang your shingle. You put it up on a, on a wall, you put it up on a building, you put it up in an office, and you let everybody know around you that you are in that business of being an attorney. If they need help, let you know. Well, in dealing with friends and family, um, the same thing applies. Well, this is what I am. This is what I do. This is what we offer. If you need anything, let me know. Now, I'll tell you about a family in Nikon called the Spader family. They, I don't know if they're still involved or if they're where, where they were, but the, the father, the, the, the matriarch of the family got the whole family involved in this business, the whole family, cousins, relatives, aunts and uncles. I think they won, I don't know, 40 or 50 cars. They, they had 20 or 30 houses paid for by Nikon. They had wonderful incomes that the, the family utilized and created. And it was all based on the same idea you ask the question and then you look at the response. So if I went to a relative and say, here, this is what I'm doing. Uh, would you be interested in making an extra $5,000 by, by joining me? And they say, nope. Then I'd say, thank you very much. Next. So, so again, communication is a wonderful thing. And, and, and most people are courteous and kind with communication. So if you ask questions, they'll answer appropriately. And if you don't get the answer that you desire, then fine, move on to the next person. There's billions of people out there that we can talk to. Anyway, somebody's uh, saying something, so I will, I will go from there. Linda, thank you, I muted you. <laughs> so hope that helps on that question, but we can delve into it more in, in that sense. Don't talk to your family. I didn't talk to my family for years before I got involved and they finally bought the product. It, it just, you know, I, I'll tell you a quick story. My father-in-law, when I first got going, I needed some money and he was well to do. So I went to him and I pitched him on loaning me some money to pay the bills so I could really build this business. And I said, one day, Gail, I'm going to be making $50,000 a month in this business. And um, he looks at me across the table and said, Dave, you're my son-in-law, I love you. But if you ever made $50,000 a month in this business, I'd kiss your ass in Macy's window. And, um, and <laughs> that's kind of like, whoa, <laughs> take a step back there, apologize for anybody that may have been offended, but that was what he said. And he lent me the money and that helped me build the business. And then when I made the $50,000, I went to him and I showed him the check. And, you know, he kind of had to eat his words, you know. So from the standpoint, and then he bought the product. See, then he bought the product. So, okay, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at a big playing field and you're playing a game and you've got a strategy and you've got a plan. That'll be lesson one that you learn on DaveRolf.com. Number two, you're gonna learn what to do. Number three, you're gonna learn how to create your story. Number four, what I'm developing on is how you're gonna figure out what works for you. 
And then number five, we'll get into the comp plan when it gets tweaked that I'm working with Luis on that. And then we'll keep out the series because this is fun. If you make it work, it's fun. It's a, it's a blast. But I, what I found, there is no such thing as failure, guys. There is no such thing as failure. There's only not doing enough of what's known to work. That's it. I mean, it, it's just, I've, I've observed this for 30 years. It's, and I've been, I was in the industry 15 years prior to that. So 45 years of watching what's going on here. People just give up too quickly or they don't get the right data to learn what to do. And so they do the wrong stuff. They don't get the right results and they quit. They just haven't done enough. They haven't you know, persisted long enough, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I was one of those guys. My first 15 years were terrible. I persisted, it didn't work. I said, that's it, I'm done. <laughs> and then when the right deal came along, uh, I almost threw it out the door. Thank goodness I didn't. But anyway, another story. So it's all about communication. Develop your stories, practice. You've got a gazillion stories. The Masuda story, the Nikon story are going to be the big thing. And we're going to talk about that on Saturday. And if you want specific help, give me a call. I got to figure out how to turn this thing off. So I'm going to stop recording. Okay, there we go.